you about today. Step number one, be audacious. My college graduation was 13 years ago. We had over 6,000 graduates. It was a great ceremony, or so I was told. The truth is, I wasn't there. But first, let me back up a bit. I grew up in rural Maine. When I was five years old, my father was incarcerated. My parents split. We became homeless. I moved 12 times over the course of the next five years. Despite the challenges, we valued education. My mom did her best to make sure that we went to good schools, even if that meant two hour plus commutes. Like it was yesterday, I can still remember those ice cold 4 a.m. showers. We'd have to walk 10 minutes to go to the dock, take a 45 minute ferry ride from the island to the mainland, then drive an hour across two towns, all to go to a school in a place we couldn't afford to live. But I always felt lucky. My mother believed in me, and that made me feel like I could do anything. I learned a lot from my dad too, from the times he was around and from the times he wasn't. He wasn't afraid to dream big, even when our world was small. When I got to college, I signed up for everything that scared me, which at that time was basically everything. I liked math and science, so I enrolled in computer science, but I dropped out my first semester. My parents had sacrificed so much for me, I couldn't give up. I became obsessed with thinking differently, so that for once, I could be in control. I felt so far behind my peers, but I didn't just want to catch up, I wanted to get ahead. I worked hard, but with six months till my college graduation, I still had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I needed to be audacious, but how? My brother had an adjunct professor at NYU. I heard that he was starting a tech startup. This was my chance. The timing was perfect. I reached out to him on Twitter. After a few months of persistence, he agreed to meet me for dinner in Boston. At dinner, I passionately pitched him. I told him about how hard I worked and how my entire life prepared me for exactly this moment to join him in his new venture. He said, you're ambitious, I'll give you that, but you have no skills. Why would I partner with a kid? He goes back to New York, I'm still in Boston, two months till graduation. I refused to give up. And I decided I would just work for him without his permission. I just did things, <laughs> anything I thought might be helpful to him. Using research, product recommendations, I even tried to send customers his way. First, he just ignores me. Then he eventually responds, what are you doing? <laughs> you are annoying. <laughs> Stop that. Another week goes by. Don't you have anything better to do? <laughs> but I didn't stop. I kept at it. After one month of annoying him, he let me sit in on a meeting with his engineering team, but just to take notes. I don't just take notes. I try to contribute as much as possible. After that, he lets me become his assistant. <laughs> By the time of my college graduation, I was his co-founder. I had gone from dropping out of computer science just a few years before, to running product and engineering for a multi-million dollar tech startup. My co-founder was a Fortune 500 C-suite executive. So I was incredibly lucky, but I was also audacious enough to believe I could create my own luck. You do that by taking risks, by thinking big, by not letting your past mistakes or your current environment define you. Excellence is not enough. You have to be audacious. Step two, embrace failure. Unfortunately, if you are truly audacious, you will probably fail. The startup I mentioned was actually my second company. You see, I founded my first company when I was 19. My co-founder was 18. 
We started a nonprofit to provide low income high school students with mentors and tutors. We really believed we would change education. In our first two years, we had Boston Public Schools in the city of New York as customers. I got invited to speak at Harvard Business School when I was 20. I was in love with entrepreneurship and it felt like nothing could stop us. And man, were we audacious. Calling heads of foundations, showing up uninvited to swanky black tie events, telling education experts why they were wrong and we were right. I barely knew what a nonprofit was, and there I was saying I was going to change the entire education system. It was exhilarating. We were so naive it wasn't embarrassing. In 2000.